I started my football career, <clears throat> I think, in Gambia before I came to the U.S. But <clears throat> as a kid, you know, like four years old and I don't know, six growing up, our football always with me, especially um, like in Africa, you know, that's the sport which most people do. Just you rather play soccer or, or you run tracks. That's most common in Africa. So for me, soccer was with me the whole time. So growing up in Africa, in, in Gambia, and uh, all I do is just, you know, playing soccer. So I think so my soccer career changed when I turned to, I think, 15, 16 years old, because I was just playing, you know, my area where I, where I grown up just for, like, I think they call it local, local teams. And so I wasn't taking it serious. I think that things start changing for me when I joined the Gambian under 17 uh, national team. That's where everything start changing for me. So from under 17, then I went to the under 20 to the national team. Then I, my, I went to the professional level. But I think, well, when I start playing under 17, we play, um, I think African uh, Junior World Cup, African Cup of Nation in, and Gambia hosted 2005. That's where I started. So, and we won that trophy in Gambia, that was 2005. And then from there, we went to the World Cup, the same 2005, went to the World Cup in Peru. And I remember we came to England where we do our training camp before we went to uh, US, then went to Peru. So our training camp was in Stoke City. So we spent two weeks in Stoke for the training camp, then we went to the US and um, then we went to um, Peru for the Junior World Cup. Yeah, then from then from there, that's where everything started changing big time for me. So and I know. Is that like, where um, is that where Steve Nichol um, is that where he spotted you? Was it at the um, the twenty World Cup? Yeah, Steve Nichol. Uh, so, I think for Steve those that Nichol. don't know Steve Nichol, because we're some of these guys are a bit younger, but he was. Uh, <laughs> A stalwart for Liverpool, wasn't he back in the uh, back in the eighties? Um, mm -hmm. won, won a lot of trophies for Liverpool as a legend at Liverpool. Yeah, yeah Steve Nichol, man, he's a great guy. I think he scouted me when I uh, when we went to the under twenty. So, but the under seventeen, which is like a uh, big for us, and I think that moment changed for me too because after the under seventeen, I came back to Gambia. And uh, I, then I traveled to UK. That's where I came do the trials with West Ham United. I was with them for two weeks. And then, then from there I was in Arsenal, another two or four days with Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Then with Tottenham as well for like a week. So Birmingham and uh, Reading. Ras was Reading before I leave then. Then I, the, then they called me for the under twenty. Then I leave UK. By then I was in UK, going club after club, training with them. And then I went back to the Gambia for the get ready myself for the under twenty. Then from there, when we traveled to Canada, the under twenty, then Steve Nicole came in and he just they saw us playing. Then he just wanted straight to sign us with no trials or nothing like that. So. He signed you and a friend, didn't he? Was it you and somebody else? Yeah, this, he signed me, me and uh, one of Gambian. He also played right wing, um, Seni Nyasi. Yeah, so two of us get contract the same day and we are the same. He was my roommate too. <laughs> oh, really? Fantastic. Really. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. So you, you moved over to uh, to New England? Yeah, then I moved to New England where I play almost four years, uh, like a professional, like four years with New England. 
then from New England, I went to Real Salt Lake. I was in Real Salt Lake for like almost five years. Then when you guys came, I was with New uh, Real Salt Lake. I yeah. remember. And from that, then they trade me to Houston Dynamo. I was with them for one year. Then, uh, then I went to from uh, Houston. Then I f I went to Europe. I was in Finland for two years, and uh, then I played for uh, FC Kemi. Then I played for Inter Turku, which we won the trophy. We went to the UEFA. Then from there I went came back to US and I played for Charlotte Independence last year. So this year with the COVID and it's a game changer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So fantastic career that you've had and you've played in in uh, in lots of different places, different yeah. cultures, climates, etc. What's the mm -hmm. what are the differences you've seen in in football in US, Gambia, Finland? I think <clears throat> the football, you know, bring a lot of things for me. Like um, is a hit made uh, football made me meet great people and uh, meet people from different cultures. And uh, I think without soccer, I wouldn't say I wouldn't be here because it make me travel worldwide, you know, place, you know, as a kid, you dream of, but you never put your feet in there, but soccer take you all the way to this, uh, these countries. And for me, you know, growing up with, a, uh, you know, with, a, uh, growing up with, a, uh, um, how do you call the, the thing, the dream like a way every kid wanted to be professional. Yeah. And especially in Africa, it takes you hard work, determination, a uh, lot of courage. You know, sometimes you might go, they think you're not good enough, you can't make it. And a lot of kids will just leave it and try to do certain things or try to get themselves to the military and see and stuff like that. For me, that was in the case, I just like focus as they, I'm gifted by one thing. Let me just try to utilize on that. So that makes me keep going. Every time I go, some coaches like, you're not good enough. Like when I was in England, they wouldn't say you're not good enough. They would say, oh, we're going to call you again and things like that. But they would, uh, I would do everything. I'm like, it doesn't work. That's not end of the world. And I keep moving. So that's make me keep moving, going to different clubs. But at the end, I've been playing football, the professional career for like, 13 or 14 years straight, never stop Brilliant. since I started. Yeah, yeah, but it makes me meet good people and different cultures and, you know, so. Where was your, yeah. where was your favorite place to play? Uh, I would say in South, real Salt Lake. Salt Lake was like, a, when I came, because I've been playing different positions. When I came in New England, I was playing left midfield and forward and midfield, like a second strike. So that's what I've been playing more. Then I went to New England. Uh, I went to Salt Lake City, which they were looking for, looking, looking for a left back. So, and I, I remember, I remember I said, once playing a national team left back, let me just go. I'm like, I can do it. They was like, okay, we want to see you. Even though we saw you playing left midfield forward, but we want to see you, how you're going to be defending. Uh, defending. Sorry about that phone it's call. okay. Yeah. Good. Then, uh, then from there, when I went to Real Salt Lake, so I was playing left back the whole time. So yeah. they think I was the best left back out there. My thing, like, why you didn't play left back the whole time? I'm like, nah. <laughs> Because I'm offensive minded, keep going forward, stuff like that. So that helped me. Great, thank you. What uh, yeah. what was life like growing up in in Gambia? You mentioned that you were playing local, and then how did you manage to go from local football to playing for the national team? Yeah, <clears throat> well, I would say a bit hard because you know you growing up watching Premier League, La Liga, but there's not lot of chance for you to get out by then we don't have that much scout to who will come to us like in Gambia like uh, to scout players and stuff like that the most of the people who start playing professional I think we got like I would say Gambia have like less than 
maybe you would say more than 15 professional by then before we get out to start playing professional. I think from the under 17 on 2005, when we from the under 20, from the under 20 as well, then most of that team start playing professional. And now the Gambian football is, you know, is all over like players been going, especially the kids who came to Italy and stuff like that. So, but growing up was a bit hard, you know. And by then, sometimes you have coaches, the Gambian, most coaches they have, you know, sometimes they pick who you know or who you you know, sometimes yeah. you, you gotta get those kind of coaches. If I'm friend with you, then your kid could play, even though he's okay, they're trying to bring in the national team. Mm -hmm. So that was, but I think us, for me, going for trials for the under 17, they bring a coach from Ghana. You know, I think he passed away or some doo, doo He came in, you know, he went to scout players all over the country. He doesn't just go, they bring team. He's like, I'm going to see it for myself. He will go to the local tournament. He will go to the divisional teams and watch and start scouting players. For me, like, I think when they went country tour, they scout all of most almost 600 kids they could find, bring them. So they're gonna do the final selection. Right. So that's 600 kids. And you only have like 30 minutes to show what you have. So 30 minutes. So you're gonna pay 11 v 11 for 30 minutes. The coach is sitting, then it was like, okay, you guys get out. Another 11 v 11. So I think it take three days for that trials. Then they select 30 players out of 600. Wow. So. And I think I was lucky. And when they called my name on that for me, it was like, uh, I remember going for that trials. I was in the so hoary. I can't even have a breakfast. I didn't eat bread, man. I eat mango. So mango, I have mango for breakfast. That's how I get to the trials. Cause I was even side to eat in front of a lot of kids. Imagine 600 kids sitting, yeah. you know, some kids came with a nice bread. I'm like, oh. For me, I have to hide myself. I called one of my friends. I was like, yo, I have mango in my bag. Can we eat it? It was like, I was like, yeah, let's eat it. I said, no, not here. A lot of people are watching. Let's go back, you know, so we eat and we come back. So, yeah, it was, you know, it takes you, that's why I say it takes you courage and determination. Some, you know, you, you won't able to make it. Imagine 600, you see some kids with talents. They start juggling before you get out yeah. to play 11 bit. They're doing some skills work in the locker room or outside. I'm like, yo, this guy got talent, man. I don't think I would make it. Look at this. You know what I mean? Yeah. But soccer is a game thing, man. You never know what talents you have. You could have only one thing, and it could keep you going your football career. You know. Mm -hmm. For me, I wasn't good one v one with you know, but I know I have one thing. I could pass, shoot ball harder, and I wasn't selfish to cross the ball. That was my weapon, like whipping the ball most of the time. Right. So I went for the trials. I didn't change my mind. This is what I can do. I utilize it. I wasn't giving the balls, dribble everybody, and the coach wasn't looking for that. I think by then, even though. So for me, when they call my name, you know, Abdullah, I'm like, Abdullah. There's maybe a lot of seven Abdullah in this place <laughs> right now. So which yeah. one is it? So. They then called my last name. I'm like, okay, that, that's how, how I get home. And I told my friend, hey, they select me in the Gambia on the 17. I remember where we used to sit and he write something. He was like, one day things must get better. So that's what he wrote behind because of I told him the news because they select me. And uh, I get home, I told my mom, you know, my mom was like, what is that? I'm like, mom, they select me, they got me nationality. It was like, yeah, what is that? I'm like, okay, don't worry, you'll figure it one day. <laughs> yeah, and yeah wow. that's, Fantastic. it takes, yeah. You, you talked about kind of being told by lots of different managers, you're not good enough or you, they will, will call you, but then the calls never came. How, mm. how do you deal with, or how have you dealt with disappointment throughout your career? Well, um, I think the bigger one was like, uh, I think uh, me and my one of my friends, he played for Sanderfield uh, in Norway. 
So I even went to Norway for trials because I was in England trials, Norway trials, in Finland trials. I think the bigger one was in Norway when the owner of the team, I think he's a dentist, he wanted me and me and my Gambian friend. And uh, the manager came in, he was like, oh, you guys are good, blah, 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 you're excellent, you know, the trials, high school goals and everything. But he was like, okay, now I have a lot of young, talented kids, so I want to take one of you instead of two. And the owner was like, I want one, both of them. So, and that one was like, uh, you know, which you think that was like, okay, it's going to change for you because even the owner was like, you guys not leaving. I would make sure the coach had it, but the coach came in, was like, okay, I will take one of you and I'm going to take your garment brother. So you have to leave, you know, imagine I'm with room with him, you know, so yeah. now I have to pack my stuff. He's always settled. And it was like, okay, go to Finland and you do another trial. I'm like, wow. So that was heartbreaking for me. I couldn't, you know, then I went to Finland, which is like, okay, maybe that one will work. Then Finland, imagine they, so I trained with them and then game, the coach was like, oh, no, we have something that, so we let you go home. So I went back to my room and I started crying. I was like, you know, well, I come so far, but all this is not working. Then I couldn't able to go away, do something. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go back to Gambia. Still there's more because it's not end of the world. And uh, by then I was like 17, eight, yeah, 17, 20 to 18. I'm like, I'm gonna go back and work hard. So that's how I get back to Gambia and I start working hard. And then from there, then I came to England to start doing from West Ham to Arsenal, from Arsenal to Tottenham, from Tottenham with different agents. You know, I remember that. How did you stay positive when you were getting all this kind of rejection after rejection? Yeah, I think my mom saw me travel more than that ever before because I think one time I leave England, I came to Gambia for one day, then I flew to Norway because they could ever see. So what's going on, things not working, but you know, and it was hard, especially the one in Norway and the one in uh, Finland, because every time I went back to my room, I would cry because you know, you that you wanted the game so much, you love of the game and you wanted to play professional and the rejection I keep coming. And I'm like, nah, because still I, I got hope, you know, if not this team is gonna be another team. Once you start playing for one team, I think whatever talent you have, you could show it and then you're gonna be next, mm -hmm. you know, big, big market. It takes yeah. you one team. That's all, it takes you one team. You that could one be the one chance you have it, I'm telling you, it's gonna be a game changer for you. For that, for me, that's what I needed. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I came to New England, I was performing, then went to Salt Lake, was like boom for me. And and it never stopped for 13 years straight. Who was who was supporting you, you know, traveling around the world to go to these different trials? Was it your family or friends or? Uh, no, like, uh, and the team will, call you they will get your ticket and okay. uh, I think one time the team I play for in Gambia which is uh, Real de Banjul I think they're the one who get me to come to England because they send me invitation on Friday they say they want me to get there on Saturday so and Friday morning we have to do everything go to the embassy from the embassy they give me visa I go to get the ticket from the airline from there, I get home. I told my mom, I'm going to UK. They was like, you never, you never tell us you're gonna travel. I said, no, everything come on this morning today. So everything have to be shut today, shut out today and I have to leave today. So right. I start the Great. paperwork. Yeah, every paperwork I start from nine to at noon and 2 p.m. I have to leave Gambia, the flight leave 2 p.m. So they, I don't know how they might, but everything, get in the same day and uh, 
the team president who I used to play for Real de Banyul, first division, and uh, he he bought that ticket for me. Right. The, okay. Yeah. The the rest was uh, when I was UK already there. They they have the agent who took me was moving me around, and uh, yeah, another agent okay. came in from Norway, make me fly to Norway and Finland. Fantastic. Who have who have been the biggest influences on on your career? Uh, like growing up, I used to watch these two guys. I follow. They live in our neighborhood. Um, one of them is a striker. The other one is a midfielder. And he they never play pro. They only play semi pro because I used to follow them all the time. You know. And when they go, they have to pay transportation. I have to sit on their laps to get to where they practice. And I can have to be a ball boy all the time. Right. And yeah. I, was, I was a good ball boy, but I was, <laughs> you know, not a good ball boy sometimes. When they're leading, I have to get the ball. Like, gotta get the ball slowly. But when they're losing, I'm the fastest ball boy ever. You know, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. could do some, you know. So, yeah, those two guys influenced me a big time. And, uh, and uh, one of the coach came in and uh, you know was giving me more chance in the in the national team after the Osam Dudu left. So mm -hmm. I would say those three guys, you know, big time for me. And, yeah, Omar Jaju and Bua Fatajo and Peter Abadu Johnson. He he passed away now. You you played in the MLS uh, for a long time. Who was the best player you played against? Um. Yeah, like uh, I would say, uh, Jovinko, when he he was in uh, Toronto, when he came in, he was good. And David Beckham always, I yeah. was fighting with David Beckham, man. <laughs> I think I tackled one of the LA Galaxy team, and he stepped in. What's he doing? You know, <laughs> with the, the the British accent, yeah. and he came to my ear, like you know, start talking to me. He would get mad. I'm like, yo, <laughs> and then my captain came in and was talking to him. So I was like, and he used, it. was it a nice word? Oh shit, <laughs> what you doing? You know, like that, the English act. I'm like, yo, I was like, man, I'm like that, you know, he, so it was a battle after I tackled one of the things. So Beckham was in the right, I was in the left. So we kind of crossed each other all the time. So he came and tried to slide me, then I think, I got it one and you know he got mad so it was like almost 90 minutes for me and him <laughs> but and Didier Drogba as well and Henry when they play here so it was you know it was big time those guys and you watch them at Premier League and uh, now you watch you playing against them so it's something big. Yeah, yeah. it just reminds me like uh, when Man U came in here to play a friendly game with them and you know, you've seen all those, you know, like big guys and big name. I'm like, oh, wow. So you're playing against them. I'm like, football is just, man, this is not a, like, a, it's just one game, man. So I said, what is different now? I'm like, that's not much different. You know, I could do this. I could play in the Premier League. That's that's going to take you. I'm going to play that Liga because you're playing to play. You're competing with them, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just, I think, who wants it most? That's what it takes you now. Yeah. Who wants his money? Fantastic. Yeah. Guys, do you have any any questions for Abdullah? If you want to pop them in the chat, um, yeah. any questions that you may have, and then we'll we'll pick those up from there. Um, maybe if you could um, describe what an average day was like for you as a as an MLS player. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> And MLS was like, I think for me, when I played in MLS for, I think, 10 years, then uh, before I knew that much how big MLS was when I went to Finland and and I could look at those guys like uh, I went to Intertruku, I went to, and uh, so the pressure is on me, all the media and you coming from the MLS. I'm like, okay, I thought MLS is just like a small MLS, that's it. but. Mm -hmm. Beside you talking about La Liga and uh, Premier League and France, Bundesliga, then MLS is, you know, they count, MLS is big. So especially in Scandinavia, I didn't know that when I went to Finland and uh, I could see how the media was, 
And so now the pressure was in me, I have to change the game. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not David Beckham, I'm not Drogba <laughs> right now, but I'm just Mansali from MLS Brazil. But I think MLS at some point is big and now all these quality players and uh, young talented kids are coming up and uh, it's really, uh, it's a competition though. And it's, you know, MLS is just like, uh, I would think it's a hard, you know, you gotta be going hard. If yeah. not, you're not gonna survive and stuff like that. It's not gonna be easy. You think it's gonna come slowly. So everything is just, it's, it's really hard, you know, it's challenging right now. Yeah. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Some questions have come in from the guys. How, how did you get your trial in Norway? How did you get your trials in Norway? Uh, no way, um, because from the under 17, which we, you know, I think I scored the first goal for the country and the country never went to the World Cup. That was the first time we went to the World Cup. And the first time we won African Champions League, uh, African Na Cup of Nations in, in the youth level. I think that was the first time Gambia won it. And, uh, but the, the, and the first time Gambia ever went to the World Cup and they, you know, right. all the tournament with the junior. So I think we went there, we played against Brazil, our first first game against Brazil, which you have Marcelo, Anderson, and you know, there are a lot of them. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Gambia, will, will, which is Gambia is not known in the map, even the map. We went there, we in kind of the same hotel with them. They, they was like, they keep asking, where's Gambia? We saw them a map. They was like, oh, is this a street? Even their place, yeah. so we kind of. So I think in Africa, most people are all Gambia. With all those talent kids, by then uh, Brazil have. They said they're gonna smoke Gambia. They're gonna spell Gambia, and the game changer. They score us with a bicycle kick. I think 26, 25th minutes with a bicycle kick. Uh, commentator was like, we, "We're gonna see more of these goals coming up," and I equalized 27. You know, one one. And uh, and uh, I think that's when my mom know I was doing something, which is like because they they break our main door in Gambia at 3 a.m. because of jubilation. A lot of fans run to our house. They you know, and my mom was like, "What's going on? Is a war going on or something?" No, your your son scored a goal in Peru. The time difference was 3 a.m. in Gambia. So my mom next day I called. I was like, "What are you doing? They break the main door." A lot of people get here you know, dancing and stuff it's like football. So she figured it out now, you know. So I yeah. think that was, then Norway, when I get to Norway, I think it was like an agent. When I'm from England, there's a, another agent was f trying to follow me and Ibrahim Sohna. So he was, uh, was trying to get us. So then I was in UK and thing was in working and it was like, yo, are we gonna get your ticket to go back to Gambia? and then you fly here. So he get me a ticket to go to Gambia for one day, and I fly back because I cannot fly to Europe. If, uh, so I have to go to Norway, then uh, Gambia, then I'll fly to Norway. So right. that's how I get my Gambian uh, son to meet in Gambia. Then from there, we both fly to, uh, to Norway. Norway. Yeah. So that's how I get, so it's an agent who called me because their team was, you know, they wanted to left midfield and so, yeah, then that's Great. how I get oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Question from Denzel. Uh, what is the biggest risk you have taken in your career? What is what? The biggest risk you have taken in your career. Uh, risk? Hmm. I'm trying to say, oh, what, is, what do you mean risk? Uh, I can't. What do you mean risk? Like to maybe might leave something for my career or stuff like that. Yeah, Denzel, if you want to unmute yourself, do you mean to um, yeah, yes. sacrifice or what do you mean, Denzel? Yeah, yeah like sacrifice, like like all the part, not all the time that you have, you haven't spent with your family because of your career. Yeah, I also, think. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I think, yeah, that was important because like uh, it's separate because since then, like, my younger brother, I got three younger brothers because for me, I didn't spend much time with them. So now we side, we, it's not like we side to each other. And, uh, and uh, one sacrifice was like a school too, because like of, 
you know, like, uh, you know, focus more on the game than trying to get myself like a school wise, you know, education. And which is a key because like you won't know it till you go and your soccer career is about to end and the soccer, you know, now it was like, when it's done, what am I going to do? So school was like, okay, for me, I was like, okay, I was trying to climb fence and jump and go play soccer, trying not to focus on school more. But now it's like, okay, soccer career is done. What am I going to do? So if you did not education, that was like, that's one thing I'm like, mm, I regret as it focus more, but still not late, but I would say you could still do the same boredom, you know, going to school, then you come, you got your training and all those things, but it's a key, man, because run, run, you know, after 40, 45, you're going to done with soccer. So after that, what you're going to do? So I think school was number one sacrifice because I should be staying more, but I start climbing fence, but you guys, nobody climb fence, come on. Just do, <laughs> yeah. Hey, and do school as well. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. What uh, a question from Fielder? What was your favorite uh, moment or memory of your career? Ah, uh, when I scored against Brazil, the goal that's a memory for me, and uh, and uh, and when I signed my first contract with New England and was back and forth, you know, going all the trials, which is like, uh, you know, make it, going back to, you know, Africa, travel to Europe, travel to UK, still. So both when I signed my first contract and uh, it's just a blessing. And uh, from that, and, you know, that would never, I would never forget because that's what I needed at first, just to sign a paper and start because my dreams start coming true playing even on the 17 on the 20 with the national team, but still now I wanted to play for professional. So, and to see your your last name on your jersey, which is huge. And uh, that's all I wanted by then, you know. And uh, when I scored a first goal against Brazil, you know, that's what Gambian remembers still today. You know, if I okay. come across with a Gambian, they was like, oh, the guy who scored Brazil. <laughs> Brilliant. A question yeah. from Brad. Um, again, going back to how you kept a positive attitude when you were traveling from country to country and club to club, but getting rejected. How did you stay positive? Uh, for me, it's just, you know, I, I put everything in my chest, you know, it's just, you know, you know, I'm like, okay, this, I take it like if I get rejected, I'm like to myself, this is not end of the world. Maybe there's thousands of clubs out there. So immediately if you get rejected, if I get rejected, you know, I cry. I'll go through my hotel room, I'll cry, tears will come. Because for me, I want to be professional, change my family life because of how, you know, I've raised and I see, you know, sometimes the struggle to put food in the table is hard, you know, so for me, and that's for me only, you know, wanted to make me, I wanted to be a professional, at least to get something and change, not only me, but my family, you know, because I lost my dad when I was 12 years old. So I was raised with a single mom. So that only a single mom with six boys, we, my mom has six boys, three older, three younger. So none of us travel or only one of them, one of us was going to school, you know, I think that's one of the things that when I drop out of school because of the mom was supporting and she can f finance for three or four. So for me, I just, you know what, let me just keep playing soccer. So for me that, you know, so if I get rid, those are the things would make me think, you know, I'm going to push hard, even though it doesn't work here. You know, I came home there, you could see, oh, it doesn't work. But for me, they would see me, 6 a.m. in the morning, I'll go back to the field, start running again. And I'll train three times a day, two times a day sometimes. So, yeah. So when I get another opportunity, then I, so that made me keep going too. So till I... Thank yeah. you. A question from Angus. Uh, when you think of the perfect teammate, what comes to mind? Perfect teammate? Yeah. Um, Hmm. I would, like uh, I would say this guy in uh, 
I would say two of them actually. One of them in in, in Real Salt Lake, a Jamaican left back. I think he played for Stoke City, and uh, he came in and uh, they signed him. So I I didn't even know it was a left back. I was in Real Salt Lake and they signed a left back. They said they signed another player from Stoke, and he came in and so. So I was, he was in the room before me because he fried from, I think from Jamaica or England. So he was in there. So I came in, I introduced myself. Oh, I'm Abdullah. He said, I'm Daman Flips. And I'm like, what position you play? He was like, I'm a left back. I'm like, holy couch. <laughs> Why do you bring left back in the left back? Now it's competition like me. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh no. But we became like a close friends and brothers. And, uh, Sorry. And Seni, Seni, Seni Nyasi too. I think we play Gambia under 17, under 20. So we always been the same roommate, even when we come to all the way in New England. So we always had roommate. So I got to know him more too. So yeah, those two guys. Right. And what kind of attributes did they have as a teammate? Uh, I would say Cool. Dama was a funny guy, so not only playing soccer, but when we get home, we fly fight because of playing FIFA. <laughs> and uh, he will cook whoever wins. The, if you lose, you're not going to eat. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Sene was a quiet guy. He doesn't do, he'll just be on a computer and just, you know, or play FIFA a little bit and sleep. But right. Dama was more like cool guy you know we just do a lot of things together then you know just not only not playing soccer but you know now the battle is sometimes like you gotta make yourself in you so that i could play because i know they're gonna play you more so <laughs> yeah but yeah but yeah. it's it was good time those two guys great thank you question from zach he's asking um how did you get trials when you were 18 to 20. yeah i think for us, it was like uh, when we went to the World Cup in the under 20, I think we we won two games, 3-1, three, 3-1. One, three. I think we beat Brazil 3-1. We went, we beat Qatar 3-1 and we lose to Holland. So it's 2-1, uh, uh, one, I, I think, 2-1. And we got six point. Our group, I think Brazil gets six point. I think Holland gets six, six point. Now there's goal different. I think one goal different, we are out. And imagine we are at the top. We we came out with one goal different. So that was like, a, I think from that, most agents would be watching on that 17. And uh, so a lot of agents were following us. So I think I remember it was like, a, I think all four all agent was contacting me. So I was trying to, see, because for me, I wanted to play. So anyone who could bring me a deal, I'm just going with you. So that's how I get, for, it doesn't work. So another agent's coming somewhere. I'm like, oh, because by then my age, so I wasn't signing with any agent and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that made right. me to move around. And so when I went to England, when I came to England, there are another two more agents beside the one who bring me and the other one, hey, 39, want to see you. Can I could you? I'm like, okay, then I went there. So that's how I get to rotate in England when I was right. there. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and Zach's yeah. second part of his question is um, what do you think managers, coaches are looking for in, in young players? Uh, um, well, because <clears throat> sometimes, because I'm not sure because one time when I came to Tottenham, I spent, I think, four, four, almost five days. The first training was beep test. I'm like, uh, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> so it was hard for me to do the beep test. So you got to make so you're going for try, you get yourself fit and get ready because you never know what they're going to force, what they're going to put you through. So the beep test, I didn't do that. You know, for me, that was my first time I do the beep test. And... Uh, I think I went all the way 12 and there's a guy who was there went almost 20 something. I'm like, holy cow, what kind of heart you have, man? But <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, then I uh, think sometimes, you know, they kind of look at different kind of, as manager, they kind of look at different kind of uh, 
playing style or things like that. Because you wouldn't say you're not good enough. You're not good enough, then they're not gonna call you because they see something potential on you. They wanna steal more, you know. Sometimes that's what it takes. Because I will get there, because they might, if I train with Asna, there was, the agents are calling, hey, you gotta see this kid. And then they were so the manager was excited. They might see a little video, okay, want to see him to come train with us. So you're gonna beat them with five days. So sometimes for me, most thing it was like a walking permit because I have Garmin passport and the walking permit was key, especially when I was in West Ham, they didn't want us to leave. It's the agent who make a different comment. It was like, he's gonna get us Portuguese passport when they wanted to sign us. So that's yeah. the, it was like, now we wanted to sign these two boys. So <laughs> what, where's the, you know, I'm like, yeah. I played on the, 20, on the 70 World Cup already. How can I get another passport? That's gonna yeah. be hard. So yeah. I think that was, that's messed a lot of things for me. Okay. And work permit was like, a, that was the key. Then by then they say you have to get a, a certain caps for the national team, you know, that was mm -hmm. in England. So, but right. yeah. Great, yeah. thank you. What, uh, yeah. What's the best thing about being a professional footballer? And get to meet good people, get to travel worldwide. <laughs> So pretty much a lot of things you needed to get, it come easy for you to get it because uh, uh, it's just, uh, I would say most kid dream, you wanted to be a professional player, you know, signing autograph for the young ones, you know, sometimes I would sign autograph for two hours, you know, after the game or after the game, I would stay there for 45 minutes signing autograph for the young kids and stuff like that. And being on that, you know, society be, it, it's fun being a professional player. It's, it's so much fun and, you know, it just, uh, I don't know, it's the feeling you have until unless you leave playing professional, then you know what you miss a little bit, but mm -hmm. it, it's, it's fun to be a professional player. It's just like you get excited when you meet with the great players. Oh my God, is that him? And you remember like you get to walk and kids will look at you, oh, that's you right there. And then, so Brilliant. I think, uh, yeah, that's a feeling too. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Kent asked a question. Kent um, is referencing your Man Sally Foundation. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that and what inspired you to set up the foundation? Uh, yeah, like uh, <clears throat> I think Man Sally Foundation came in when I was in uh, Rio Sao Lake. And uh, the, so I was there, one of my friends in Gambia sent me a picture of uh, a little girl that thinks she have a tumor on her neck, you know, and the tumor keep growing. So when, if they operate and it will come again. So they send me that picture because I didn't know what this foundation was by then. And uh, and uh, I saw it to my team and said, hey, can you guys contribute a little bit? I send it to this girl because she suffering to this tumor thing. So she wanted to go to Senegal to do the operation and uh, so then from there, uh, my friend was, okay, we kind of contribute. So one of, I think, uh, uh, Kyle Beckerman, you know, Ria Saole captain was like, why don't you do a foundation? I'm like, what is foundation? Because I didn't even know what's foundation. I'm like, what is that? So instead of you go to teammate, you just create your website and then, you know, people will donate and put the picture. I'm like, oh, that's good. So I work with this lady who knows the foundation and she said, so let's, let's do this. So what's the name of the foundation? I was like, okay, let's say Mansadi Foundation. And that's how it comes in and it was big. So we had that girl, I think she came all the way to US for treatment as well, but she couldn't make it and pass away. I think three, four years ago. Yeah, she didn't make it, but yeah, that was, and from that, now it's not only we're looking for the medical, but we go into food. Like for me, you know, food was you not know, tough for me for growing up. So then we trying to get the people to donate thirty dollars to buy a bag of rice and could change family life. It could survive. It could live with that thirty dollars for like um you know a month or so. So it help you if you buy a bag of rice and stuff. So that's what we trying to get people to start donating. That's how Mansadi Foundation came in. Fantastic. And with, Fantastic. with the soccer cleats. 
giving yeah. soccer cleats to the kids. So, yeah, we get a lot of soccer cleats from teammates and uh, get to my friends, even, you know, first division players who come in here and need cleats, you give them, you give to the kids and, and that been there always. So it's now is a big one right now. So we always do Brilliant. that. Always. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. A couple of questions just in finishing, um, if that's OK. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to um, our aspiring soccer players, the student athletes on our program? Uh, well, for me, the, the, I would say always, like, uh, that's, I said, you know, soccer is like a, a fun game. And, you know, for me, it's always a fun game. And you will know, in, you know, until you, unless you, like you guys in the academy right now, you're doing the, you know, which is next level going, you know, you think being a pro. So I would say it's determination and hard work. And you never say never. That's how it takes you because sometimes it won't work for you. I would say I went almost 15 or no, let's say, 10 trials, I didn't make it. That doesn't make me put my head down. It's like, that's the end of the world. I'm going to move on, do something. I'm like, it didn't work for me here. Then maybe some reason, but I'm going to go back to the pitch and work hard and stuff like that. So all I could tell you guys, just, you know, you know, put work in there because everything is a game changer. The more you work hard, the more it comes easier for you. So you got to prepare for it and, uh, so never stop it's a big dream for you guys and, and you know you like know, that's what i tell to the young kids here i say it's, this is a fun game you won't know it until you you know part of the professional level once you're there you just love every single bit and it's going to be competition as well because you're going to get a lot of different players different people from different call, uh, country so you gotta put the work in and the game is gonna come easy. So Brilliant. for me, it's, it's, it's right here, man. So you guys, you know, yep, just work hard and things will come easy, man. I always take it from me, like I'm from West Africa, born and raised. So if I could manage to make it all the way from Africa, all the way to US, you know, Europe, not more than the ones in Europe and, you know, America, you know, you get this way, Trust me, you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. And where would you like to be, Abdullah, in closing? Where would you like to be in three years' time? Uh, three years' time. Right now, I'm with, with my Gambian friend, like I told you, who I, you know, play with, you know, in a national team. He's a midfielder. He also came to Reading. He trained in Reading. So he run this EGA football training, academy training in US, in based in Seattle. So he's getting big and I would say it's big. So we do one passing drill, it went viral. I could see it in the UK. Everybody just likes it. And and so so this EJ training is big. So now I'm with him and we're doing this, you know, training as well. We get more talented kids and and I always tell them about you guys, you know, eye to eye. You know, I've met you guys. I think I came to England. I stay with my my buddy over there, <laughs> so he take care of me. Thank you. Give me a good food and good bed as well. I miss that bed. I need to come back. <laughs> so, yeah, and was was good. For, and um, so I keep telling him all the time, you know, so he's, he, you know, we know about you. We watch you guys, you know, what you guys do to as well. This is good. And he had been changing people's life. Like here, us, we're doing the same thing, so which is good. So three years from now, man, you know, I'm like, maybe I'm going to be a coach, you know, because I'm following this genius guy. He's, you know, teaching me a lot of things. So I'm with him for now, you know. So this year I didn't play professional. So hopefully next year, if something come out, I'll be able to play. If not, I'm doing the coaching right now. So, wow. yeah. Well, best of luck to you, Abdullah. Thank you ever so much for your time tonight. Really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you for sharing uh, your uh, your career and your um, your insight and your advice. Yeah, always my one of my friends said. So that's the final word I'm gonna give you guys is S N S. <laughs> never stop, never settle. So you guys never take stop, that one. Never settle. <laughs> Love it. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, bud. <laughs>
All Take right, care. You Have a great day. Take care, right, my no friend. Problem. Thank you. <laughs> See you, bud. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Thank you.